Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. Uh, this is episode. 204 Whew, getting up there that's lovely um thank you one and all for turning up today for today's stream looks like we've got about oh what's that 33 people watching at the moment and of course the doggos want to bother me straight away go and sit down go to bed go on go to bed go on go and jump in the bed goodness me live video crazy Okay, um, thank you to financial members uh, for supporting the show, both on YouTube memberships and Patreon. Uh, before I start, I suppose, I better introduce myself. I'm Gavin Weber. I'm the Chief Curd Nerd, and I will attempt to answer your home cheese making questions. So, shout out today to Dominique Borelli. Thank you, Dominique, for your for re signing up for YouTube memberships. You have been a previous member for quite a while, uh, and it's lovely to see so many people in the chat as well. Uh, big thanks to all the patrons out there as well. Um, without your support, I wouldn't be able to keep the show going uh, as I do. And as you can see in the background there, we have some doggo action. That's Hamish and Bonnie. Goodness me. Now, um, videos this week, uh, we have uh, Graviera. Uh, there's going to be a premiere straight after the show. Hang on a minute. One second. Doggos. Stop fighting, please. Lie down and be good. Good dogs. Oh, that lasted two seconds. Hang on. Doggos. Shh. Quiet time. That might have... No, that didn't work either. Anyway, we'll put up with it. Goodness me. Um, we are live over on uh, at YouTube, uh, Facebook and Twitch. And don't forget that next week, um, uh, next week we still have a show, so episode 205, but uh, due to our silver wedding anniversary, there won't be any streams on uh, the 27th of February and the 6th of March or whatever date that is for you, where you live. Okay. Um, so, as I was mentioning before the doggos interrupted me, the uh, Gaviera, which I've called Graviera, uh, for want of uh, not getting a PDO letter from whatever lawyers there are out there, um, uh, my twist on Graviera, and that will premiere at uh, straight after the show at 9 o'clock. So, that should be good fun. Um now, those in the Melbourne area, I know there's a few from Melbourne who are watching, uh, don't forget that the Melbourne Wine and Cheese Festival is being held on Saturday the, Saturday the 26th of February. Um, I was actually given a opportunity to speak at one of the master classes, um, Sam Penny from Artisan, what are they called now? Um, oh, goodness me. Artisan cheese, artisan something. Um, uh, he's been on the show. Anyway, um, Sam Penny, sorry, mate. Um, yeah, so they invited me to go and speak, but due to the silver wedding anniversary, uh, I thought that took priority. But uh, definitely on the, uh, on the cards for next year uh, to talk there. And also don't forget that the gallery is going to be at 30 minutes past the hour where we get to see lots of and lots of wonderful photos today um, from um, from you, the cheesemaker. All righty, uh, let's say good day to a few people. Of course, uh, first cab off the rank was Bill Nelson. Good day, Bill. Good day, Annette. Hello, Annette. Uh, we've got Sheila. Um, we've also got uh da, 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 da. charlie g'day charlie fun pants 94 michael patrick uh, uh manel g'day manel we've got patricia hello patricia uh annette judy george g'day george patrick uh bob and barb 
Uh, Biden's crack pipe. Too much Parmesan going on there. Um, we got Michael. We got Wendy PJ. We got BR. Bubba Dub. Oh, what the? Bubba Doug? Goodness me. Um, we've got uh, Adam. G'day, Adam. We've got Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Um, what else? We've got uh, John, who's really Bruce. <laughs> um, and we had a lovely picture of his cheese. One of his cheeses. Let's see. There it is, the, the cherry parfait that we showed last week. Um, also got Puffinator. Um, who else? Lump of Coal and Jeffrey. That'll do. Um, okay. So, wonderful. Um, thank you, one and all, for being here and uh, joining the show. And we'll have lots of questions. Let's have a look. Where's the first question so we can sh start the show? Um, yeah, that'll do. I think that's what we'll do next. Let's have a look. Uh, Patrick has a great statement to start the show. Cheese is basically happiness that you can melt. Indeed, unless, of course, you're halloumi and you can't melt it. It just fries and it's lovely, but it's just as happy. It gives me happiness anyway. Um, Michael says, thanks for... Uh, hello, Gavin, and thank you for this great channel. Appreciate it, mate. No problems at all. It's uh, my gift to you. Um, now, there is a question. Is Velveteer, oh, Velveeta... Velveta, sorry, Velveta uh, cheese, a cheese to you? It's relatively constant topic when cheese is brought up amongst friends of mine. Okay, let me describe what cheese is. Uh, I think the FDA in the US says the cheese must be, it's about, must be at least 50% of the content of the cheese. Uh, I don't think Velveeta meets that category. So to me, personally, this is just my personal opinion, a cheese must have certain ingredients and probably not much more. So obviously milk, uh, it's got to have some sort of coagulant, whether that be an acid or rennet. It's got to have salt. It's got to have cultures. And really, other than maybe a few additives to make the cheese fl different flavours, like, you know, like um, uh, fruits and spices and herbs and stuff like that, then that's about it. When you start getting into the realms of things like sodium citrate and fillers and emulsifiers and uh, other flavourants and all this other sort of stuff, to me it's not cheese. But that's, like I said... That's my personal opinion. Whew. Um, uh, Lindsay says, G'day, Gav and Kim. Uh, cheddar and Gruyere this week. I may be obsessed. I think you might be, mate. Uh, but, yeah, I think I've got one of your cheeses in the gallery today. So that should be good fun. Um, uh, Bob says, I think it's Bob, not Barb. Uh, Bob says, Gavin, I made your castle blue. And everything went great. The blue mould has covered the cheese and I pierced it at 10 days. How long does it take for the cheese to get soft? Uh, it took about, if I remember rightly, uh, a month and a half. So that's, what, six weeks tops? Uh, I wouldn't go much past that. But I'm sure you can, as it matures, just uh, check it yourself. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it should go quite soft. Oh, somebody's activated the curd nerd light, uh, and there is a, uh, a super chat. Thank you very much, Lump of Coal. Let's get to your message first. Those who pay get first priority, of course. Lump of Coal said, and thank you for the $5 US. How long have you been making cheese? What's your top three cheeses to eat by themselves or with something simple like crackers? Mm, good question. Uh, I've been making cheese since, oh, when was it? 2009 is when I made my first cheese. I went on a cheese making course here in town at the local community centre. Uh, and I made feta was my first cheese that I made. I, it wasn't, it was successful, I suppose. Uh, it didn't taste much like the fetters that I make today and that I've got videos of, but it certainly was feta none the least. Um, top three cheeses for eating. 
All right. Um, a really strong cheddar. So it's got to be at least aged uh, 12 months old. Um, let me think. A nice gooey blue cheese. So strong blue cheeses are good, but I like the runnier blue cheese or the softer blue cheeses. That that would be fantastic. Uh, camembert and brie, yeah, but they're so common these days. Washed rind cheese, a good washed rind cheese like, say, Tilsit. Fantastic. So they're the top three cheeses that I would have with crackers or eat by themselves. But as I always say, I love all the cheeses. So um, they're just some that just, uh, they're amazing. They're just amazing. All righty. Um, all right, thanks uh, again, Lump of Coal. Uh, da -da -da. Let's have a look. What else? We've got some other, lots of questions there. Um, this one's from Manel says, why change, uh, why change the name of farmhouse cheddar cheese to farmstead cheese? I don't know. I didn't do that. Um, I just call it farmhouse cheddar. Look, uh, farmhouse cheeses have been around for, you know, a millennia or two. Um, they're just made on farm. So it can be any shape, size. I just call it farmhouse cheddar because it's more of a stirred curd cheddar and doesn't go through the proper cheddaring process. You get the same sort of uh, cheddary flavour, but, yeah, I just call it farmhouse cheddar. It's what I found recipes of, so. Okay, uh, Jeffrey says, I sent you the similar to Gorgonzola picture a couple of days ago under... TA Custom Cars. Ah, Jeffrey, I was waiting to find out who TA Custom Cars were. No name makes it very hard to figure out. So anyway, we've got it listed in the gallery as TA Custom Cars, but I'll replace that with the word Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey, for letting me know that. Um, Anne, hello. How are you, Anne? And Cease says she's tardy to the party. Good morning, Kim, Gav and Pups. And speaking of pups, there's one in particular that's giving me the willies, and that is Hamish. What do you want? You want to go wee wees? Oh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back in one second. Don't go anywhere. Honestly, Hamish, come on. There you go. Some days you win, some days you don't. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Anyway, um, so another question. Uh, this is from The Observer. says, question about my Monterey Jack. I'm about to pop in my K for aging. If I opt to wax it, uh, not to wax it, what difference should it make for my aging? Also, is it possible to wax after aging? Fantastic question. I haven't had this one for a while. Um, yeah, so if you opt not to wax it, the rind will dry out faster. Uh, make sure that you keep the humidity up in the cheese fridge because the last thing you want is the rind to crack because the cheese dries out too quickly, and that does happen. Um, so that's the difference it'll make. The cheese will be drier basically, than if you had have waxed it. Uh, is it also possible to wax it after aging? Indeed, there are a lot of cheeses that uh, commercial cheesemakers, once they've cut the wheel up, you get a little wedge and the whole wedge is waxed. That's waxed for uh, storage. And uh, so the cheese doesn't dry out, of course. Anyway, yeah, that hope you enjoyed that question. Thank you very much. Uh, Sheila, g'day. I don't think I've seen you on the stream before. Hello, how are you? Um, uh, John says, all my cheeses are going to take months. This learning curve is certainly not for the impatient. Indeed, it does, uh, it does help us develop a sense of, uh, time and patience. It certainly does as far as I'm concerned. Um, question from John, who's really Bruce says, do you ever add propionic bacteria for the taste effect? 
without adding a warming period. I've been adding it frequently lately. Um, no, I haven't. Uh, I Because propionic bacteria is quite expensive, um, I tend not to add it to things that I don't want eyes for. Yes, I know it imparts a nutty flavour in the cheese as well, but that kind of coincides with eye development. So... I don't know if you're going to get that nutty flavour. You may do. You may do. I've, like I said, I've never tried it. I've only used uh, propionic bacteria, propionic shimani, for um, for making cheeses that I have, I want eyes in. So eyes as in holes, holy cheese, like Swiss and uh, Jarlsberg, Emmentaler, those styles of cheeses. Even, uh, is it uh, Leodama, I think, is the Dutch version. Okay, um, Biden's crack pipe says I found this wonderful channel while seeking a sodium citrate. Well, I hope you found that little um, tip handy. It was very simple to make and is a good emulsifier if you want to uh, repurpose cheese. So if you've got a whole bunch of little bits of cheese uh, that you've either made or bought and you don't know what to do with them and so they might start growing mold, what you can do is shred them. Uh, add a bit of cit uh, sodium citrate to them and a little bit of water, uh, heat them up and you'll have a nice gooey um, a nacho cheese is, is a good way to serve it up if you add a bit, a lot, quite a bit of water. Uh, but if you want to remold them uh, in some silica molds or something like that, then you can certainly add less water and that uh, makes the cheese more firmer and tastes a little bit like Kraft Singles but with a lot more flavour if you're using different types of homemade cheese, that's for sure. Anyway, um, Lindsay says, boo, boo, boo. Lindsay says, hi, Gavin, I'm making blue cheese and I have the blue mould uh, get going at 10 degrees, then stop. Um, it keeps smelling blue, but I don't get a full blue covering. Do you have any suggestions? Um let me think. So blue mold stops growing for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is lack of oxygen. So make sure there's enough oxygen or airflow. So make sure that you either take it out of the ripening box a couple of times a week uh, and turn it uh, as you should. So uh, that way the blue won't uh, won't die. It's always a good thing. Um, another thing, if maybe blue doesn't like a heck of a lot of salt. Um, some versions of blue mold of uh, penicillium Roque 40, I should say the real name. So penicillium Roque 40, um, it does, some of it doesn't like a lot of salt. There are strains that do like a lot of salt. Um, you may have stumbled across one that doesn't like a lot of salt. So there's a couple of suggestions. And uh, the, if the humidity is too high where you're ripening, uh, it tends to get taken over uh, by red mould, um, Brevibacteria linens, if it's in your local environment. That sometimes happens to me if I keep it too humid um, and, yeah, it stops growing. However, as long as it's grown into where you've pierced the cheese, that's all that matters. Because remember, when you're doing the piercing, remember the penicillium Roque 40 is all through the milk when you when you make the cheese. So it's sitting there dormant, waiting for some oxygen so it can grow into the cracks and fissures in your cheese. So as long as that's happened, doesn't really matter on the outside because most of the time you scrape that off anyway before you serve the cheese up. Um, but uh, as long as the blue mould has grown through the little... Um, the piercings that you've made, then then that's fantastic. That'll be the best. Alrighty. Um, Bean Brothers says, hello, cheese man. Hello, Bean Brothers. Um, Aaron says, just finished up your Havati recipe. Thank you, Aaron. And I hope that you send me some photos in. Um, okay. Next question is from... Uh, Sheila says, for a beginner like me, what would be a good starting book to use for cheese making? Oh, goodness me. Uh, what you can do, uh, can I recommend my book, uh, Keep Calm and Make Cheese? Let me just see if I can pin that onto the chat in YouTube. Are you on YouTube, Sheila? 
Yes, you are. Let me just find it in my little merchy shelf thing. Um, here we go. Let's pin it to the chat. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to purchase that through Teespring uh, if it comes up. It may or may not come up. It's thinking about it. Anyway, so yeah, hopefully it's cool. Keep there it is. It's pinned in the chat in YouTube. So you can click through there if you want. Um, it's an ebook only. You can buy the paper version over at, um, uh, where can you buy that? You can buy that over at uh, littlegreenworkshops.com.au, which is the shop that Kim and I run. There's cheese supplies and a whole bunch of other goodies there as well. But uh, yeah, hopefully uh, that helps uh, you, Sheila. Um, cheese needs. Uh, Tracy, hello Tracy, lovely to see you. Uh, love the Gaviera, no problems at all. Um, I'm glad you got early access uh, because I think you're a patron, if I remember rightly. Yes, you are. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll, like I said, the uh, the Gaviera cheese will be shown after this live stream. Um, a Colt Nino says. Uh, how long do cultures and rennet last in the freezer? Probably should order new ones, but I might not need to wait. Uh, okay, so my advice is that the cultures in the freezer, uh, if they're the freeze-dried variety, they will last. Uh, but there's a best before date on each packet, okay? Um, I tend to use them up to a year after the best before date. If they start to clump together because it's a free-flowing powder. Uh, usually it's some sort of lactose or maltodextrin that the uh, bacteria are suspended in. If that goes clumpy, throw it away. It won't work because it's been, uh, it's got moisture into it and the bacteria would have started to breed and now they're dead. If it's free-flowing still up to about a year, then I'll still use it. With rennet, um, I tend to use more liquid rennet, which I store in the fridge. You shouldn't store liquid rennet in the freezer because it probably doesn't work if you've done that. Uh, tablet rennet in the freezer will last. I've used it up to five years uh, with tablet rennet. There doesn't seem to be any issues with that at all. But liquid rennet, I've used up to a year past its best before date. Um, notice I didn't use use by date. There is no use by dates on the cheese making products. It's just best before. Hope that answered your question, Nino. Um, uh, John slash Bruce says, my two cloth banded cheddars released a, a lot of milky whey. Is this typical or were my curds too warm? Recipe called for tearing up just before pressing. Does this usually happen? Um, a lot of Milky Way comes out if you press cheeses too uh, too heavy too quickly, um, I tend to find. If it's just a little bit cloudy, that's okay. But if it's like milk pouring out of it, all the milk fat's being uh, pushed out in the pressing process, um, that's usually what it means. That's why you'll see in the cheddar recipes that I use that I, I cut them up into fingers uh, make sure it's all still warm-ish. Um, I think it goes to about 38 degrees Celsius. It doesn't get much higher than that. So they kind of need to be warm to knit together when you cut those into the fingers. Uh, I know that um, when they make factory cheddar, uh, they put it through a, a shredder of sorts that mills it into about finger-sized pieces, uh, and then they press the, all that together under quite a lot of pressure. But the curds are quite dry uh, after they've been shredded. So that's why cheddar normally needs uh, a fair bit of pressure to put it together. Sounds like your curds may have been a bit too moist as well, uh, John slash Bruce. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Uh, Michael says, sorry if this has been answered before, but doubling my cheese recipe. So double milk and rennet, starters and rennet and any other ingredients, right? About the resting and curing times, double two. Thanks. Um, no. So you're right. The first part, so double the all the ingredients, double them, beautiful, um, or triple or quadruple, whatever you want to do to scale up your cheese, right? Um, resting times, 
and curing times and pressing weights. Um, uh, you're going to have to press it harder because it's going to be a bigger cheese. Uh, but resting, curing time, all the timings don't change uh, because you've got double the milk, double the cultures. It's going to acidify in the same amount of time. It's not going to change. Uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of the rule of thumb there. Don't double the the resting times and curing times and coagulation times and all that. that, that it'll all happen the same. Um, Andrew says, I've made some camembert and it's still expelling whey whilst in the maturation box, causing the bottom of the cheese to be damp. Is this normal? Uh, depends on how early in the stage of uh, maturation it is, Andrew. Uh, it tends to go away within two to three days and then it dries out. If you're having trouble, pat the... Pat the bottom of it with a paper towel. Get rid of some of that extra extra moist moisture. Um, it seems to me that you may not have left the camemberts in the moulds long enough um, to you know drain properly. So, um, but got to remember that when you've salted the cheeses, if you haven't brined them, if you've just salted them dry salted, then that brings out more whey as well. Brings out more moisture. So. It can be normal in the first few days uh, in the ripening box, but if you're up to like two weeks and it's still weeping way, the curds were way too moist. Okay. Um, Kyle says, oh, we at nearly at 30 minutes past the hour. Kyle says, uh, was here before, been looking at ways of growing penicillin rock 40 from store-bought cheese, practice with agar and other pieces of cheese. I can see good mole growth. Um, that's really good. There is another way to um, to do it is to smear some of the penicillium rogue 40 that you've bought onto rye bread um, and put that into a ripening box and just keep that at a, you know, a little bit of a, and put a, a wet, some wet paper towel underneath the mat, put the rye bread on top and that'll grow penicillium rogue 40 till the cows come home and you can scrape some of that off as a mould powder or the mould spores and put that into your milk. So that's another way to cultivate um, penicillium rope 40. Um, and I got that from David Ash's book, The Art of Natural Cheese Making, I saw, but he's he does that. Um, so out of, Kyle also says, out of 10 tests, only six really stuck through. You were right about being a coin toss, indeed. Rye bread seems to have the right structure to grow penicillium rogue 40. So uh, one last question before the uh, before the gallery is from Patricia. Patricia says, I've recently I have been pressing cheeses under warm way, especially ones prone to not knitting well, like stout cheddar with excellent results. Have you ever tried doing that? Uh, I did with a couple of cheeses. So um, what were they? Uh, I think Edom and Gouda. I haven't pressed them under the way, but uh, when I molded them into the basket, I think there's a step with both those cheeses or one of them, I think it's Edom, that you keep it in the warm way to consolidate the curds and then you press it. I think that's what you do. But I've never done that. What I'm more likely to do is... As the curds are resting or milling, and, and you've seen it in the last few videos where I actually keep the uh, che cheese in the basket whilst it's um, either draining or what have you, and I keep it in the basket draining in the pot, which is in the water bath, and that keeps it warm as well. So as soon as I go to the pressing phase, um, I don't have too many troubles with pressing. But I haven't actually pressed underway before. I don't think my um, – would my cheese press fit in the pot? It might. I'm not sure. But, yeah, great suggestion, Patricia. And if you've had some success, that's absolutely fantastic. All righty, it's time for the gallery. Whew. Very excited today. We've got so many pictures. Uh, let me just unpin that merchandise. We can't see that anymore. It's only so much. Um, we can look at – uh, here we go. Let's. Uh, sorry, I'll just share my screen so you can see these lovely photographs. Here we go. 
share. All righty. Um, okay, so first one is from Bruce, whose handle in the chat is... Um, where is it? John, I think it is. John C. Spine. It's really Bruce. Um, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing that. But uh, yeah, maybe change your handle in the chat. Um, so first of all, we've got um, Bruce has sent in this lovely copper pot that he's bought. And he's got a bit of a spiel about it here. Uh, he says, found a bargain on Etsy, capacity 3.8 gallons. I've been watching videos of European cheese makers and their massive copper pots. I can't wait to do a cook. Uh, it arrived too late yesterday for anything then, uh, for any other than pouring way off, I think. Uh, this is the picture he's talking about. So there's the copper pot, and, yeah, so he's done some way with it. Um, but, yeah, fantastic. Uh, what does it say? Um, uh, off the... Uh, but it's very pretty, yeah. Uh, hopefully, it'll impart some flavours that aren't normally common when you're using stainless steel. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, the next picture from Bruce. So this one is him using the copper pot and he's making uh, cold wall piquant, I think it's called. It's from um, Giannicles Caldwell's book. Um, uh, mastering artisan cheese making, which I think uh, uh, Bruce has got, and there's the cheese there in some brine. So, this is uh, almost four kilograms of raw cow's milk, uh, four gallons, sorry, of raw cow's milk, um, extra heavy organic, non homogenized cream, maybe two C, what's a C, cups, uh, different cultures to try using Lipro Alpine and Floralac, both Italian produced, a touch of lipase, some calcium chloride. Uh, the first copper cook is in the brine. The lower sides of the copper vat are easier to stir in, better for my neck. Fantastic. Um, and that's the finished cheese. It came in at, uh, oh, two kilograms. That's massive. So nice big cheese there. Well done, Bruce. I think we have some more pictures. This is also from Bruce. This is his cloth banded cheddar um, that he's used a mold to knit that. I like the shape of the mold. That's very nice. Nice rounded edges. Not so sharp like mine, but this is the cloth banding. He's used uh, pork fat, which is better known as lard. Um, and he's basically just smeared that all over um, his Cloth, very good. And that should mature very well. You'll get some funky molds on the outside, Bruce, but that's to be expected as far as I'm concerned. Okay, uh, we've seen the copper of that. So the next one is, this one's from Bruce as well. You can see, uh, <laughs> I can see there's some some uh, wax splatters on the back. That's a well-used cheese stove, this one. But what he's got here is two neoprene um, back braces that he's put together, they're Velcroed. And he's put them together to insulate the pot. And it works really well, he says. Um, I'm starting to do, I'm doing that when I have an all grain brew mash to maintain the temperatures, but it works great for cheddar as well. Um, pay no attention to the splashes of red wax. I'm sure somebody else did it, indeed. Fantastic pictures as always. Thank you, Bruce. Um, appreciate you sending them in. Uh, the next cheese is, oh. We've got two. How do you do? Oh, goodness me. I didn't know I could do that. Uh, this one's from Judy. Hello, Judy. And we've got a got a little spiel here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, she's called this her Ice Yalberg. Iced Yalberg. There we go. And the reason, here's the story. Uh, Yalberg is very popular in this household, so I made two at the same time in a heat wave in December. She lives in Australia. When it comes time to... Uh, when it came time to affinage them at 18 degrees Celsius, I put the external thermostat on the caravan fridge and then got sick and didn't check them for nearly a week. Big problem. When the thermostat cuts the main power off, the solar panels cut in. Okay, so that's in the caravan. So my two cheeses spent almost a week at negative 17 degrees Celsius. Oh, what's Siri got to say about that? Hey, Siri, convert negative 17 Celsius to Fahrenheit. 
minus 17 degrees Celsius is 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Goodness me. And yes, so, uh, Siri does have an Australian accent here. Uh, but yeah, so that's very cold. It says they now have three weeks at 18 degrees and this one has a good taste and texture. Indeed, it's still got some really good eye development, Judy. Very proud of you doing that. Um, of continuing to age. A lot of people would have thrown it away, but no, you know better, which is great. So fantastic. Okay, so this is from Lindsay, and this is a farmhouse cheddar blue that he's made, and he scraped all the blue off it. There is a spiel here from Lindsay. Let's have a look. It says, uh, good morning, Gavin and Kim. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to say. Kim's not in the chat, by the way. Don't get too rowdy. Um, she's having a sleep in today because um, the doggos kept us awake last night. Ants in their pants, I think. Um, Lindsay says, good morning, Gavin and Kim. Curiosity, curiosity got me this morning and I cut into my slash your farmhouse cheddar blue. Definitely a cheese I'll make again. I have pierced the cheese about 30 times. The cheddar taste is coming along nicely with a good blue balance. All right, so here's the big reveal. Uh, after he's cleaned that off. Look at that. That is absolutely spectacular. Let me just zoom in so we can get some of that blue moldy action going on there. That would have a fantastic cheddar flavor, indeed, as he said. And look at that. That veining throughout the cheese is just perfect. You couldn't do any better than that, really. I think it looks very similar to the one I made. So... Well done, mate. Congratulations. Let me just zoom that out so we can go to the next picture. Um, thanks, Lindsay. Appreciate you sending that in, mate. All right. Next one is, this is uh, Mikal, which uh, it's a, he's got a spiel here too. Or Mikkel. We'll say Mikkel. Um, Hi, Gavin. Hope all is well. I've been busy the last week with a few cheeses. The first one, oh, hang on. I haven't got the right one. Oh, let's do both of them. Here we go. So this is side by side. I don't even know I could do this. But um, all right, here we go. So the one over here, this one is a, what is it? Uh, a Lester. Uh, and he didn't have any Anato. So he gave it a try with saffron and it only got yellow. Hey, that looks still pretty good. Um, can I use another additive to color the cheeses? Because um, it's difficult to get Anato in Europe. Uh, I'm sure you can order it from uh, uh, from a UK cheese making supplier. You're only in Denmark; it's not that far away. Should be able to get it, mate. Um, but anato is great because it um, it doesn't impart any flavour, whereas saffron on the other hand, you'll get a saffrony flavour in the cheese. Um, so yeah, um, they did used to use marigold petals soaked in water was one way to make the cheese a little bit more yellower. Another one they used to use was carrot juice, but that imparts a flavour as well. So nothing really that won't impart part of flavour like an Arto does. Okay. Uh, the other cheese here is a Gouda. So, um, and that was no fuss, he says. And the last picture, which is this one here on the left, says... Uh, it's a Manchego style made of goat's milk. Hopefully it will turn out right. Fingers crossed. Um, I could have made a fake camembert as well, but my job got on the way, maybe on the weekend, and he said he's made that already. All right, so fantastic. Thank you very much, Mikkel. Um, great looking cheeses, of course. Uh, the next one is from Patricia. If I got it right, yes, there we go, Patricia. So this is uh, another one of uh, Patricia's Sweeney Todd series cheeses. Uh, it says, hi, Gavin, I changed my mind, decided to send a photo of this cheese before waxing instead of waiting until after affinage because it's so pretty. Indeed, it's a lovely looking cheese. Um, it's called The Financier, uh, based on Jim Wallace's wine-infused cheese recipe. It's part of my Sweeney Todd series of cheeses. The inspiring lyrics are... Uh, from the, the musical, uh, Lovett, Mrs. Lovett says, try the financier, peak of his career. Todd says, that looks pretty rank. 
Lovett says, well, he drank. Uh, it all rhymes. Since he drank, my financier cheese has gorgeous port-soaked curds. Although it might help to make it rank, uh, I didn't want to smear smeared rind uh, paired with an alcohol infusion, so, so no bacteria, brevi bacteria linens this time. It's ready to taste in two months. Looks like a great cheese. I'm going to have to do the same sort of thing. So that's uh, from cheesemaking.com. Wine soaked. Which is probably very close to the Red Windsor that I'm going to be making. That, in fact, that looks very much like Red Windsor, um, which is an English style, uh, cheddar-y style cheese soaked in port as well. Well done, Patricia, as always. Uh, this is from Stefan. Stefan's got a little spiel here. Stefan, thank you very much. Says, hello, Gavin. This is my first try to make cheese. It should be a brie and they are two, uh, one week. I would hope to see the white mould soon. Have a nice weekend, Stefan. Yeah, they look pretty good, Stefan. Once the mould gets on them, please send me a thrill photo. That would be absolutely magnificent. So... Uh, the next cheese is from TA Custom Cars, which is really Jeffrey. <laughs> so Jeffrey sent me a, a whole a picture gallery of a whole bunch of uh, steps. So this is him making his Gorgonzola style, uh, not to be confused with Gorgonzola uh, PDO cheese, of course. So he's got that in the mold there and staying warm. He's used Himalayan pink salt which I told him was okay. It shouldn't impart much of a colour on it, but it should work um, without too much issues. Uh, it doesn't have iodine in it, so it won't kill off the um, uh, won't kill off any of the bacteria. Um, there it is, growing some mould, looking fabulous, fabulous. There's some more mould growth. This is like a time lapse, and there it is, totally covered in mould. And I think. It is ready to pierce. There it is. And there is Steph, oh, not Stefan, Jeffrey, um, piercing his cheese. Looks pretty cool. So send me a picture of the inside once it's all done, Jeffrey. And that is the gallery for this week. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. All great. Thank you to everybody who sent in photos today and in the past, of course. You get a chance of being a thumbnail for a uh, upcoming episode of Ask the Cheese Man. Um, I pick them at random, basically. Um, uh, so, yeah, so hopefully you'll be in the running for that. There's no prize or anything. It's just glory, fame on the channel. So that's all very cool. So how do you do it? How do you send in photos? Let me just find where the heck did I put it? Where is my channel? <clears throat> oh, goodness. Here we are. Let me share. Uh, how we do this. There's a special way. So here is my channel. I'm incognito. That's me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we do is we go to the About tab just over here. We click on that. And down here it says Details. It says For Business Inquiries, sign in to see the email address. If you're signed into your Gmail or YouTube account, whatever you use for YouTube, then you will see a email address there. Please send it there and to no others that you may have handy. Uh, that one is the one that I check uh, on a weekly basis. So, yep, that's where you send uh, your gallery photos. So please do that. And any explanation about the cheese, like I said, and you've seen, I will read that out during the show. So absolutely fantastic. Um, I've got some doggos that want to come back in again. So just bear with me for a couple of seconds and we'll get back into the stream in a second. Come on, let's go back inside, please. Give me snacks. I hope you had fun and did all your businesses. There we go. Right, go lie down. Oh, there we go. I'm back. Uh, like a grandfather to these children. There we go. There's Bonnie in the background. 
Okay, I think they've they've got the ants out of their pants and they should be right for the rest of the stream. All righty. Um, let's get to the next question. How many? How much time we got? Oh, that gallery went for 15 minutes. That was massive. Um, so we've got about uh, 15 minutes left before the premiere of the Gaviera cheese starts. Okay, so Aaron's got a question, says... Uh, I have a cheddar that's about a month old in vacuum pack. And I noticed some small mold spots on it. Should I take it out and wipe it off and repack? Uh, yes, I would, um, because it seems that there may be an air leak in your vacuum packing. Because remember that uh, most molds need oxygen. And by vac packing, you're taking away the oxygen and not worrying about any molds. So, yeah, take it out. Wipe it off with a simple brine solution and then let it air dry a little bit, probably about six hours, uh, and then repack it again. So hope that works for you, mate. Um, uh, Bill says, your definite cheese reminds me of the Rhine Heights, oh, Heights Gebot, which is the 1516 German purity law uh, where the only ingredients that should be used were water, barley, and hops. Yeast added later. Uh, that's for beer. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming. I'm pretty sure that is because when I went to Oktoberfest, some of the beers still adhered to the German purity law for beer. Okay. Um, Soul Brother says, I made more beer cheese from your video. Heat got away from me during the temperature raising before the washing. Did I kill my mesophilic cultures in the cheese and is it ruined? Could be. Could be. Remembering that, well, 102, what's that? 30, 40 degrees Celsius. So 38 degrees Celsius is the cutoff, which is, what, 100 Fahrenheit, roughly. So you've gone two degrees over. Mm, I would carry on. Keep calm and make cheese. Carry on and mature it, press it, mature it, do all that sort of stuff. See what happens. Make sure it's been brined for long enough because with my Morbier, I didn't brine it long enough and it was a little bit bitter because there was not enough salt in it. Uh, and I think I corrected that in the recipe, in the uh, maybe in the taste test. Uh, but, yeah, in, definitely in my cheese-making book, Keep Calm and Make More Cheese, which is the second edition of my cheese-making books. The Morbier recipe has been corrected, and there's a, a big spiel about it compared to the video. Okay. Um, Kyle says, um, although I've been growing with just a couple of scrapings, so that might throw off the test versus using a whole couple of tablespoons of mould from the che blue cheese. All oh, right, we're talking about growing blue mould again. Yeah, so that that that's cool. Yeah, put put as much as you can. Um, John slash Bruce says, are cheddars with eyes common? I added some propionic shimani to some of the ones I've made bound just for fun. Uh, you can always see yellow cheeses with eyes in cartoons. Yeah, because that's what cartoons associate cheese with. Um, no, uh, eyes in cheddar. Cheddar's a tight structure uh, without any eyes. I have never seen a cheddar-style cheese with eye development. Um, so it'll change the flavour of the cheddar. It won't be cheddar either, Bruce. Um, here's a question. Aaron says, do I need to do anything to store-bought crushed red pepper before putting it into a Montserrat Jack, Monterey Jack curds. Store bought red pepper. Are you talking about chili pepper? Chili? I hope you are. Um, what did I do? No, I didn't. I didn't do anything to it. Um, especially the rub on the outside. I, oh, you, if you, uh, if it, unless it's moist, if it's moist and it's been, um, you know, sitting in vinegar or something like that then, yeah, maybe to pay to boil it a little bit. I tend to use dried. If I've used dried chili, then I will boil it and then add the water to the to the milk as well, uh, drain off the, the chili flakes. And, uh, yeah, that, that works really well uh, because you need to, you know, get rid of any molds or yeast that may be on the chili. 
uh, which they do tend to grow when they're dried out. Anyway, um, uh, Anne has a question and says, have you ever made anything that tastes similar to Bella Vitano cheese? I've tried it and now on a mission to figure it out. It's a sweet alpine parmesan and cheddar with lovely crystals. Um, is that similar to... Uh, what's it called? Where is my Trello board? I have it here somewhere. Uh, Prima Donna Fino, which is similar to... Oh, that's similar to Gouda and Parmesan. A oh, sweet alpine bar. I think what you could do... Here's a, here's a thought. Use the... Use the Emmentaler recipe that I've got on the channel somewhere. Uh, and add a little bit of lipase to it. That'll give you the picante flavour, the spicy flavour, um, or picante in French, or picante in Italian. It'll give you a spicier flavour, more fuller flavour, and that may replicate it. I've never tasted Bella Vitano, so I don't know, but I'm thinking if it's got an alpine flavour, it's got propionic shimani in it, it'll have... Uh, a mesophilic like uh, Flora Danica that produces a little bit of gas as well for a creamier flavour. And Parmesan cheddar. Oh, no, I don't know about the cheddar part, but definitely the, if you want to replicate a little bit more of the Parmesan, add a little bit of um, lipase to it, lipase enzyme. Okay. Um, Where are we? Next question is from uh, the observer. Says, where can we send our photos? Uh, I showed you already. So the about tab of the channel. There's an email address. Shoot it there. Um, and Aaron said the same thing. Thanks, Aaron. Yep, shoot them through if you haven't already. Uh, Demetrius says, next week I'm going to make a cloth-bound howler. Uh, at what temperature should I mature it and for uh, for 12 months? Uh, 13 degrees Celsius, 55 Fahrenheit. There we go. Um, Annette says that my scary shop, 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 Shropshire Blue is still ripening but has a tiny spot on the edge. Should I cut it out? Um, we'll kill the curtain of light. It still has a tiny soft spot on the edge. Um, should you cut it out? It's up to you. Yeah, you can. Um, I've got to remember the Prenicillin Rake 40 does tend to soften the cheese a little bit. Not so much with uh, Shropshire Blue, but um, yeah, you, you, if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. Um, question from Dennis, who put in a $5 super chat. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate the support. What type of cheese should I make for a Swiss raclette? Uh, type cheese. Raclette. I love raclette. Um, I made it. I made raclette. Let's see if I can find it on the channel. All right. So let me just um, show you how to find things. <laughs> uh, YouTube doesn't advertise this feature very much, but we will. We will educate. That's what I'm here for, Mr. Educator. All righty. So there's the YouTube channel. If you want to find anything, go to Gavin Webber. You can go to the home if it doesn't really matter where you go. But see this little search bar. So if I put in uh, rack, let, and I'm not even spelling it right. It's got two L's because it can. No, it doesn't have two L's. I've got to remember how to spell it. Um, it's got no E. Oh, you duffer, Gav. Bonnie, quiet. There we go. How, and that, all the raclettes come up. So how to make raclette. There it is here. Um, and I'll, can I put the link in? Oh, we've got an ad. Don't do ads. G'day, Australia. Um, let's uh, let's get the link and we can copy it in. We'll kill that now, shall we? Uh, okay. So the link for the raclette video, here it is in the chitty chat. And uh, bingo, boingo. There it is. There you go, Dennis. Um, and you can make that style of cheese yourself. How good's that? All righty. Thank you. Um, 
How much time have we got? Oh, we've only got five minutes, four minutes before the premiere starts. And we've got another super chat going off there. Fantastic. Who's that from? I can't tell yet. Uh, that's from Observer. Says, um, and thank you for the $5. I appreciate it. When you chill your wheel for waxing, how long do you safely leave it in the freezer? Oh, 10 minutes max. Um, you're only trying to cool the surface down. So when you uh, apply the hot wax, it cools down a lot faster. So no more than 10, 15 minutes. Uh, it doesn't hurt the cheese at all. So you haven't chilled it down. You're probably chilling it down to about four degrees Celsius, which is no big deal. The brevi, uh, sorry, the uh, lactic bacteria will recover, no problems at all, once it's back at 13 degrees Celsius. There you go. There's your question answered. Okay, a couple more. Let's have a look. Um, question from Seth says, have you ever heard of Manchego cheese? Oh, mango cheese. I thought it meant Manchego. Mango cheese. I dehydrated some mango in Florida and put it into a farmhouse cheddar. Eager to see how it turns out. Hmm, interesting. Um, no, I've never heard of mango cheese. You look like you invented it. Well done. Um, let me just... Um, oh, need that. My throat's going a bit spare. Okay. Um, good observation from John slash Bruce says, bacteria have a fairly broad temperature range. If the temperature gets away from you, pre just press on. Some likely survive. Uh, that's just population biology statistics, indeed. Um, some will survive, um, and maybe you'll get a mutated cheese. <laughs> Very exciting. All righty. Um, what's the next question is from, uh, where is it? Oh... Uh, Somebody, Krogan, says, love your haircut. Thanks, mate. Very tweet. That's what I like. Nice, tight haircut. Trim the beard. Looking quite sexy, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, that shouldn't shh. Family friendly. All righty. Next question is from uh, BeautyFox66. Is just wondering, I just opened Castle Blue. My goodness, it is the creamiest, most delicious cheese I've ever eaten. Pour a blue, what's your opinion? Uh, yes. Uh, it would be on par with the creaminess of the buttermilk blue, no less. Very different styles of cheese making, different ingredients, but same sort of result, very, very rich and creamy. And yeah, Castle Blue, it blew me away. Ah, get it? Blew me away. <laughs> All right, that's very cheesy. Um, Let's see. Is there another question from Chris before we chop over to the uh, to the premiere? Last question, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Gav. With Valencia pyramid shape, shape moulds, do we need to flip them? Yes, you do. Uh, it is difficult because of the shape. When you flip them, they basically come out of the mould. Oh, okay. No, sorry. The Valencia mould, like a little four-sided pyramid without a peak. It's a flat thing. No, you leave them like they are. And then once they've drained enough, then you turn them out. That's about all you can do, and it seems to work. Anyway, um, thank you so much, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to the show today. And uh, don't forget that if you want to learn how to make cheese, there's no better place I can think of than the course that I created over at the Curd Nerd Academy. If you want to find it, go over to courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au and you will see the Beginner's Cheese Making course, uh, where you can learn to make nine cheeses in your own home with so many different instructions. There's a great learning part before you get to the recipes, and you'll learn all the basics better than reading a cheese making book, personally. If you want to get some merch, and don't forget to, if you're on YouTube, there's a merch shelf. You can go and do that if you want. Um, for those who aren't on YouTube, you can go over to Cheese Man TV dot creator hyphen spring dot com that's me um and you can go over to the merch store and don't forget that if you want to buy any cheese making supplies we ship to quite a few countries now pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au well thanks for watching everybody without your questions there wouldn't have been a show um it's been fantastic answering all your questions today 
Um, I've really enjoyed it, as I do every week. We will see you on episode 205 next week. Uh, don't forget to turn up. Same time, same channel, all that sort of good Batman stuff. Um, but thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time.